Halation is a visually pleasing characteristic of film, and I'm talking about actual film. You often see the halation effect in movies shot on film, and it's a sought after look that many filmmakers want to achieve. Here you can see a digital recreation of what film looks like with and without halation. The image with halation has a soft highlight roll off and a slight red tint and some grain, particularly in the highlights. Let's get technical for a second to explain in simplified terms how halation occurs when shooting on film. When light hits film stock, it travels through blue, green and red layers and the light is absorbed. When these three layers are combined, they create a color negative. When you print them to a positive, you get the film footage we are familiar with. Now, this last layer here is the anti-halation backing and its purpose is to absorb any light that penetrates the red layer. When the light is really bright, the anti-halation backing can't absorb it all and some of the light is reflected back onto the red layer. The result of that reflected light can be seen in very bright parts of the shot with a reddish glow, usually around light sources like lamps, car headlights, backlit windows or the sun. So that's halation in a nutshell, and recreating halation accurately is difficult to do digitally since the interaction between light and film is very complex. But we can get relatively close to creating the red halation effect in Final Cut Pro with this free red halation plugin, link down below. If I drag and drop the red halation effect onto a clip, you can see we have the halation effect in action here around the light and it looks pretty good without adjusting any of these settings. But of course, you can customize it if you need to. You can adjust the blur amount to increase or reduce the red glowing effect that happens around the brightest parts of the shot. Subtlety is key here because the effect can easily be overdone. As you can see, if I boost this blur all the way up, Let's zoom in here to 100% so you can more easily see the next two parameters which affect the horizontal and the vertical blur. If I pull the horizontal blur parameter all the way down, the blur only happens vertically. If I pull the vertical blur all the way down, we have a blur that only happens horizontally. In most cases, I would keep these two values the same, but you can play around with these two parameters to get a more stylized look. I'll apply the red halation effect to this next shot to show you why you would want to adjust the vertical and horizontal blur values at all. If you look at the red blur around the windows, the blur is too wide for that small dark area. Just bringing the blur amount down doesn't give us the look we're going for, but dropping the horizontal and vertical blur amounts to let's say 50 makes the blur distance a bit shorter. So we still get that nice red halation effect, but it's not just a big red smudge across these darker areas. Now, because we are blurring the red channel to create this effect, we do lose a tiny bit of sharpness, which in most cases looks more like film, but you might want to counteract some of that loss in sharpness. And to do that, you can turn sharpen on. The intensity slider adjusts the radius of the sharpen effect and the amount will increase the amount of sharpness. You don't want to push this too hard, but a little bump in sharpness is enough to bring back some of those details. I'll zoom in a bit more and show you the details on these buildings by disabling the sharpen effect and re-enabling it. Let's look at one more example to show you how the grain section works. It's on by default, but you can obviously turn it off if you're not a fan of grain. The grain is applied to the highlights by default, so if I click on the view mask button, you can see where the grain will be applied. Using the grain threshold slider, you can adjust where the grain will be applied. You can also soften the mask. I'll uncheck the view mask button and zoom in so you can see the grain more clearly. You can see that the grain is applied in the highlights and not in the shadows. You can choose the type of grain you want and whether or not you want it to be monochrome. If you pull the threshold all the way down, the grain will be applied to the shadows as well. But be careful, it will be way more prominent in dark shadowy areas, so you'll want to pull the grain amount down. Once you've downloaded the free plugin, you need to watch this video next where I explain how to properly install plugins, titles and transitions into Final Cut Pro.